there is a recent uproar about MOQ using sponsor link and that it's going to expose your email to the internet. So I just wanted to go through what exactly is happening and how concerned you should be. And uh, this is just based on my opinion. So this is the Reddit post where it all started. So in the latest version of mock, which is 4.2, it has included a .NET analyzer that scans your local git config on build, gets your email address and send it to a service hosted in Azure to check whether or not you are a sponsor. That's essentially what it does. That's the job of sponsor link. And this is the GitHub repo for sponsor link. And it clearly says here, it integrates the GitHub sponsors into your library so that users can properly link to their sponsorship to unlock features or simply get the recognition they deserve for supporting your projects. Sponsor link supports two scenarios open source project developers or maintainers who are looking to incentivize sponsors to contribute to the project to ensure ongoing and recurring income that can help ensure proper maintenance and further feature work. Open source project consumer who want to ensure their dependencies have an active team that can provide support, bug fix and new features. That's essentially at a high level, the two thing it does. And if you ask what is GitHub sponsors, GitHub sponsors is nothing but a way to invest in open source softwares. Invest in the open source project you depend on. Contributors are working behind the scenes to make open source better for everyone. Give them the help and recognition they deserve. That's essentially at a high level what it is about. And if you have an open source project, you can start with get sponsored and get some money. I think this is a good idea overall because we use a lot of open source project and they help us tremendously on day to day. So why not sponsor some of the open source project we use every day? So that's at the heart what it is. And MOQ just introduced that particular NuGet package to understand. Now, if you are uncomfortable sharing your email, then of course you will not want to use MOQ version 4.2 onwards. Now, there are a couple of ways of doing it. One thing is what I have personally done is I have just downgraded my applications which uses MOQ from 4.2 to the earlier version. I think it was 3.18. And uh, that's something you can do. In that version, any version before 4.2, it does not have sponsor link. So you will not have the issue of your email getting uploaded. Now let's try to understand how it works. and. How it works is given in this blog post here. And this is the URL, kazulino.com slash sponsorlink.html. So sponsor link at a high level, what it does is the goal of sponsor link is to link in most direct way possible your sponsorship with your library author sponsor account. And since the place where you spend most of the time enjoying your fellow developers open source project is inside IDE, you should be reminded that either you are awesome, Becker and project is alive and thanks to you, or you should not forget to take action to become number one, given it's incredible, straightforward and affordable. So that's, that's basically what it is at a high level and how it works is here. 
Sponsor link will never interfere with your CI CLI build, neither a design time build. There are important scenarios where you don't want to be annoying your fellow open source software users. The way it works is if the user is not an editor or there is no network, there is nothing to do. A library authors runs git config dash dash get user dot email during the build to get the current user's configuration email. If there is no git or email, there is nothing to do. And then what it does it, it makes a quick HTTP head operation and it goes to Azure blob storage to a relative URL ending with app slash user email. If it's a 404, it means that the user has not installed the sponsor link GitHub app. This app requests read access to the user's email addresses. So the previous check can succeed. If the previous check succeeded, the second HTTP head operation is sent to Azure Blob Storage, ending the sponsor link account and email address. If it's 404, it means that the user is not sponsoring the given account. In both three and four, user is offered to fix the situation with a quick link to install the app and then sponsor that account. That is all at a high level what it does. Okay, it basically collects the email and ultimately sends it to Azure Blob account to see if you are supporting a sponsor link app or not. And then of course, it will save your email address in the Azure blog. The sponsor account side, the way it works at a high level is an one-time provision of your account by installing sponsor link and Ming GitHub app and setting up a sponsor link webhook in your dashboard to notify sponsor link of changes for your sponsors. Integrating with sponsor link for .NET NuGet package and shipping with your library, it ships as an analyzer of your library. And that's it. That's what at a high level this particular app is doing. And as I said, yes, it is going to collect your email address, which is associated to your GitHub account. So if you are uncomfortable sending your email address in Azure Blob, yes, this is something you might not want to use. But on the flip side, if you think about it, our email addresses are exposed in so many different ways these days. This is not just this. Everywhere we connect, we have our email address. So many apps out there where we use our email address for integrated authentication these days. So I'm not sure how critical this is. Well, of course, this is in some Azure blob storage and we don't know who all has access to it and whatnot. So Yes, that might be a cause of concern. But on the flip side, it is going to help open source community to maintain projects. So it depends on how you feel about it. I don't think we should like, I don't think I'm going to say don't use it or use it either way. It's up to your discretion. I just wanted to explain what it is doing at the end of the day rather than just saying it's bad and no one should use it. I think individual users should decide how they want to deal with this. For me, I don't mind using this particular DLL and it sends my email address because at the end of the day, it will help me to see if I am sponsoring the GitHub projects or the open source project, which I use the most, and I don't think it's a bad idea. But if you are not comfortable, you have two options. One option is to not use mock altogether and use some other open source mocking framework like fake it easy. And the other option is just downgrade from 4.2.0, which is the latest version. If you are using it, you can downgrade it and use the older version. It's totally up to you. So that is all I wanted to cover for today's video because it has been making a lot of news. I just wanted to give my point of view on this topic. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up.
and if you are new to this channel and you think you are getting value out of this channel please subscribe to the channel and thanks so much for watching this video